Okay, uh, I'd like to call our meeting to order, please. Everyone, if they don't mind taking their seat. It's a lovely day. The sun is shining. Uh, I am uh, reliably informed, and I can see, that we have a physical quorum here today. So that's, uh, that's a wonderful new development. Just another sign that we're getting back to uh, normalcy, right? And um, by that I mean we're practicing good health habits, but we're conducting our lives uh, the way that we should be. So uh, I call the meeting of June 8, 2021, DuPage County Board to order. A physical quorum of the members is physically present. I will entertain a motion, however, to permit those members not physically present due to the coronavirus to participate by video or teleconference. There's been a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Oppose nay. The ayes have it. Uh, those who are remote, uh, we welcome you to participate in the meeting. Uh, I'd like to now ask uh, member Grant Eckhoff if you'd be kind enough to lead the board members and everyone watching in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then I'll ask you all to remain standing for our invocation. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice, for all. Justice for all. Uh, I'm joined today uh, via Zoom by Pastor Paul Arthurs from the Wheaton Christian Center in Carroll Stream, who will lead us in invocation. Pastor Arthurs. Thank you. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we take this opportunity to say thank you for all of your blessings, your favor for allowing us to come together uh, to have this uh, board meeting. Lord, we pray that you would be glorified and exalted in everything that is said and done. As your word says, righteousness exalts a nation or a people. And so our prayer is that righteousness would be exalted, that good would prevail, that love would abound, and that we as your people would show forth your praise and your glory in the earth. Take glory to yourself. Give the wisdom of God, we pray, to all those who are discussing and making decisions. May they be in line with your law that brings blessing and favor and prosperity to your people. Take all the glory to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Very nice. Thank you, Pastor. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplin. Here. Chavez. Here. Covert. Here. Desart. Here. Deciani. Here. Eckhoff. Here. Garcia. Here. Hart. Here. Krajewski. Krajewski. LaPlante. Here. Ozog. Here. Bachowski. Renahan. Here. Rutledge. Here. Schwarzy. Here. Selman. Tornatori. Here. Enze. Here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, Mr. Deputy Clerk. On to the order of business entitled Chairman's Report. We have a couple of uh, presentations. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to invite Greg Hart and Kristen Schulman uh, from PFLAG DuPage to join me up at the podium here. Um, and as they're making their way up here, I can offer a couple introductory remarks. One week ago today, uh, the county held its first meeting of the Ad Hoc Committee on Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, one outcome we hope to achieve uh, through these meetings is to ensure that here in DuPage County, all people feel they are welcome. Uh, DuPage County Board Members uh, Greg Hart and Dawn Desart asked, and I wholeheartedly agreed, that we offer a proclamation again this year in support of LGBTQ Community Pride Month. Um, uh, LGBTQ Community during Pride Month. This is Pride Month. So we want to recognize that. And this is our first meeting of the month. And so this is the appropriate time to make that recognition. And so we're very happy to, to welcome Kristen from PFLAG DuPage to accept this proclamation. I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to invite Kristen to share a few thoughts with us. 
um, and the proclamation goes as follows. Whereas, DuPage County has a diverse uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community, and the county board is committed to supporting the visibility, dignity, and equality for all people in the community. And whereas LGBTQ individuals have immeasurable impact to the economic, cultural, and civic successes of our county and country, and the county board is committed to supporting the visibility, dignity, and equality for everyone in our diverse community. And whereas LGBTQ Pride Month is celebrated every year during June to honor the 1969 Stonewall Riots in New York City where members of the LGBTQ community gathered at the Stonewall Inn to protest discriminatory laws and practices which started a national movement. And whereas DuPage County accepts and welcomes people of diverse backgrounds and beliefs as outlined in the diversity and inclusion initiatives set forth in the DuPage County strategic plan. And whereas while society at large increasingly supports LGBTQ equality, it is essential to acknowledge the need for education and awareness uh, remains vital to end discrimination and prejudice. And whereas to this day, Groups continue to advocate for the rights of the LGBTQ community, work to advance equitable treatment of the LGBTQ community, and are valued members of the DuPage County community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Daniel J. Cronin, Chairman of the County Board and members of the DuPage County Board, do hereby recognize June 2021 as LGBTQ Pride Month and invite all county residents to reflect on the ways we can live and work together with a commitment to mutual respect and understanding. I'll entertain a motion. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Approved this 8th day of June 2021 in Wheaton. Kristen, thanks so much for joining us. We accept this on our behalf and share a few thoughts. With us, Thank you, Chairman Cronin and the County Board. This is just fabulous. Um, as has been said, uh, I'm Kristen Schulman. I'm co-president of PFLAG DuPage. I think you met Margaret last year, my, my better half. On behalf of PFLAG DuPage, I am honored to accept this proclamation recognizing June 2021 as LGBTQ Pride Month in DuPage County. PFLAG, a support organization advocating for LGBTQ plus people, their families and allies, was founded in 1973 after Jean Manford publicly supported her gay son at Stonewall. Today, PFLAG has over 400 chapters nationwide supporting, educating, and advocating for LGBTQ plus acceptance, acceptance excuse me, and equality at the local, state, and national level. Just as every LGBTQ plus person wants to be accepted by their family and their community, every parent wishes for equal opportunity and protection for their children, whether they are brown, black, white, or rainbow. In a world where the LGBTQ Q plus community is often marginalized, and particularly in the last 12 months or so. PFLAG DuPage appreciates DuPage County <coughs> proclaiming to our loved ones, we see you, we recognize you, you are welcome here. Thank you so much. Okay, hey, our next presentation this morning, uh, I'd like to invite a dear friend and a wonderful community leader to the podium to join me, uh, Steve Davis. And uh, Jalen Bush is here as well. Would you be kind enough to come up and join me here? Um, an important part, an important part. Oh, gentlemen, please, everybody associated with this presentation, come on up. This young lady, would you join, join us, please? Let's have a couple names here. Need to have all of them. Yeah, you bring the team. I got it. I got it. So, uh, an important part of embracing DuPage's diversity is ensuring there's an opportunity here so that all people can truly put down roots, thrive, and grow. Uh, this is what inspires Steve Davis, uh, a DuPage County business leader and chairman of our DuPage Airport Authority, as you know. He's the founder of a county program which does just that provides training, inspiration, and an opportunity for growth. 
The Tuskegee Next Foundation is a nonprofit organization honoring the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen by providing aviation training, career path assistance, and life skills training to at-risk youth. Uh, rooted in service above self, Tuskegee Next offers mentorship, networking opportunities, and community service while training the next generation. Within their flagship summer aviation program alone, Students can earn their private pilot licenses as well as their drone pilot licenses all within one summer. I'm so excited to have Steve here to tell us more about this amazing program. So Steve, please take it away. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Chairman Cronin. It's, it's always a pleasure to be in your presence. Uh, go right ahead. And it's, it's always a pleasure to come before you guys. I, I, am, I am unfortunately or fortunately a fixture around here. I've had the, the, the great pleasure of, of serving um, at the DuPage Airport Board for, I think, Mark, 17, 18 years, um, and the last six years as chairman. And I'm just, I just really proud of the work we're, we're doing there. Uh, I have with me our executive director, Mark Doles, who's doing a wonderful job. He's passed out some things for you to view. Joan asked me to keep it to seven minutes, but I'm a Southern Baptist, so Joan, you'll have to wave something when, it, when my time's up, because I, I just, I'm just so excited about all the great things that are going on, not only with the airport, but also the Tuskegee Next program. Um, I had a chance to uh, be on a Zoom call um, with Chairman Cronin, and it is, it is good to be with you in person. Uh, we've, you know, haven't gone through COVID, and to have this is one of my first opportunities to speak publicly. It, it's, it's just exciting, and it's good to connect with people again. I didn't know what we'd lost in, in to seeing people that I hadn't seen for a long time. So thank you for, for indulging us. I have with me also um, Jalen Bush, who is a pilot in this class this year. Jalen is an outstanding individual. Uh, Marcellus Freeman, who was in class of 2017, is that correct? 2015, our first class, uh, my apology. And then I have my assistant executive director, Angel Davis, who also happens to be uh, the mother of my grandchildren. So we're, we're excited about this opportunity. But I was on a Zoom call with Chairman Cronin talking about um, uh, diversity and inclusion and with, with COD, and we were talking about issues like uh, Juneteenth. And I don't know if, if you guys here know what Juneteenth is. I, I'm very ashamed that I was a fully an adult before I even heard of Juneteenth. But uh, Chairman, just, just you know, we, we, we spend some time together, we talk uh, as iron sharpens iron. Uh, the Chairman and I have these discussions. Um, and he asked that I come in and, and share about Tuskegee. But any time I come before you, I gotta tell you the great things that are going on at the airport. That, you know, uh, in, in life, you know, having been there almost 18 years, I'm trying to figure out what, I'm, what I want to do when I grow up and trying to find meaningful, what is a meaningful occupation? What is meaningful work for me? And as you think back, you know, um, ministry is one of the highest callings. Um, as you heard Pastor Arthur's talk, I've actually known Paul for, since he was a little kid and I, I knew his father, uh, Pastor Carlton Arthur, a, a real gentleman. But that was not a, a call for me per se. Um, you serve in the public body as public servants. You go out and get elected. Don't want any part of that. <laughs> that's, that's a tough world. Uh, and then I have the opportunity to, to provide meaningful jobs as an entrepreneur that I do every day. And, and it's, it is just really a blessing to be able to do that. Um, when you think about the, the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen, if you think about uh, the time, in 1942, when the program started, it was a program that was set to fail. And the program's design was to prove that black men could not fly airplanes. <sighs> and thanks be to God that the, that the experiment failed. Because if without the Tuskegee Airmen, I don't know if you would have ever had a Jackie Robinson. I don't know if you would ever had a Voting Rights Act. I don't know if I would be standing here today without the mission of the Tuskegee Airmen. Our lives have been profoundly enriched by it. And when I became Chairman of the Airport Authority, uh, Mr. Goodwin said, you know, I, you, you should be the next chairman. I said, Mr. Goodwin, it doesn't pay anymore. I don't think I really want it. He said, no, you should be. And, and somehow the vote came, and I was the only one left standing, so I became the chair. And, and when you, like yourselves, we're all public servants here, you're trying to make the world a little better. You know, why am I here? It's not for me, because it's, it's not 
is not about me, but maybe it's through me. How do I help other people? And having had the, the experience in my life of my father, my hero, William Davis, I knew of the, of the exploits of the Tuskegee Airmen. My, my dad was, was a World War II veteran. He, if you, if it were, the word patriot it would have to have my dad. My dad loved this country more than the country loved him. Now, don't feel sorry for me because I think that's the way it should be. We should be willing to give more than we take. And from that grew the project that we wanted to do called the Tuskegee Airmen, Tuskegee Next. So I'm sitting talking with a few friends. I called Chairman Cronin and said, Chairman Cronin, I want to do this, this, this. He said, great, do it. Called another friend. I said, hey, we need to raise money. Great, do it. Next thing you know, we're sitting and we've got 12 kids that have never met each other trying to learn how to fly an airplane in 12 weeks. This will be our sixth class over six years. We missed last year because of COVID. We have 39 pilots. We have 45 kids that have come through our program and all their lives have been enriched and no one more than me. My life has been enriched. It's something incredible when you see a Marcellus Friedman uh, doing what he does in an airplane. I mean, he actually gets on the left seat and flies people. Uh, or what's going to happen to Jalen. Or there's another young man that was actually flying in the left seat for United on a commuter airline. It's amazing that when good people come together, put egos aside, and really care about the greatness of this country, great things can happen. So today I just wanted to have an opportunity to come and share. Jonah, can I get two more minutes? Okay, two more. We've, we've got an exciting event coming up called the uh, Red Tail Bet Ball. Um, Brother uh, Jay, Zay, I won't call you out, but he's always there. I will not solicit or anything doing this, this event, but Brother Jim Zay will tell you how to get, get tickets to that if you want to know. But it is a great event, and, and you get to see some tremendous young people. It is August 14th. Okay. Um, excuse me? 6 p.m. That's why they're here. They help me out. <laughs> you know, we hear a lot of things about our youth today. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to meet with a couple of these kids, and we literally spend $30,000 on each kid. And I asked them, I want you to do two things. I want you to look me in the eye and smile. And some of them just can't do it. I sit down with dinner, and I'm not a bad guy. You know, I can be a little bit intimidating, so people say, but I don't think so. It just look me in the eye and smile. Not happen. Until the first time that person solo. There was a young lady. I said, look me in the eye and smile. She just wouldn't do it. And I happened to be there to watch her get out of the cockpit the first time she flew an airplane by herself. There was an infectious smile and a confidence that could never be erased. And that's the great work that's happening at DuPage Airport because of the support of this, of this great group, the support of people like Mark Doles, the great things that are going out on out there. I, when you think about uh, the investment out there and what we're doing and this nearly billion dollars of economic activity, that's tremendous. But what really makes this a better world is what, what's happening with these young people. Because when you see these young people, if you get to come on August 14th, you will feel a little better about the future of our country because they are the best and brightest. They will look you in the eye with confidence and know that, that this, this great country we live in, this great county, this great state we live in is going to be okay. So thank you very much, Chairman. Always, we appreciate it. Um, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Mark Doles and I would love to come in and tell you all the great things that are going on at the airport, but uh, my time is up. Joan has kicked me twice, and I will move. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you.
Well, that was nice. Um, yeah, so hey, we move on to the next order of business uh, under Chairman's Report, Chairman's Remarks. And so, uh, yeah, thanks again, Steve Davis and uh, uh, the Tuskegee Next organization, which is inspirational. Um, Steve just referred just moments ago to this uh, effort uh, that we um, did together with the College of DuPage, uh, my co-moderator, Dr. Uh, Natanya Montez, uh, and we had a wonderful conversation about equity, race, and inclusion. Our conversation also featured Michael Childress from, the, from DuPage County NAACP, as you all know, COD's Sonia Watson, an interim assistant dean and English professor, Jason Snart. Uh, the program is called A County Unites Against Racism, Lessons Learned. That's the title of it. Uh, we created the form to be released on Juneteenth, um, which falls on a Saturday this year, June 19th, as you know. And uh, this revealing and uh, deeply personal discussion, I, I thought it was very moving, um, explores the way racism impacts um, all of us. It impacts our guests, our young people, our community as a whole. Um, we also asked the guests for some concrete actions um, as leaders that we can take uh, away to, to impact lasting change. And that's what I thought was so valuable about the whole exercise. And it wasn't just this one discussion. It was an ongoing program. Uh, the program will be released on our county YouTube channel and will be linked to, on our Facebook page and on the College of DuPage Facebook page on Saturday, June 19th. And I hope you'll watch. Um, it is called A County Unites Against Racism, Lessons Learned. So the county, uh, led by the county government and the county, the, our community college, College of DuPage. Um, finally, I'm informed by the DuPage County Health Department that we are nearing one million doses of COVID-19 vaccine, uh, vaccines that have provided in DuPage, one million. And, uh, we're leading the state. Nearly 60% of those eligible in DuPage County are fully vaccinated, uh, and DuPage was the first county to hit 50% of all residents fully vaccinated. So we've been leading the way uh, throughout most of this entire pandemic, I can humbly assert, um, factually assert. I want to reach out to unvaccinated family and friends and let all of our people know that vaccines are safe, effective and widely available. Please, please, please encourage your friends, families, neighbors to get vaccinated. Um, we have mobile units that will go into the neighborhoods and take the vaccinations to people if they have a hard time and they lack mobility. Um, if you know of any homebound people, um, please have them reach out to the health department or connect them with the health department um, and we can get vaccination to them. So um, as always, any and all information on vaccine uh, is uh, on the website www.dupagehealth.org. And so I just feel better all in all, don't you? I mean, here we are without masks on, the sun is shining, it's June, and uh, we're in the final, final stages of this, uh, this pandemic, and it's been, um, it was, uh, it's been a heck of an experience, and we're almost in, uh, in the end zone. We're very close. I would say we're on the one yard line. I like football metaphors. Um, so that concludes my chairman's report. We move on to the next order of business entitled public comment. Um, and I have a, a thought, in addition to our standard sort of advisory, which goes as follows, uh, according to our county board rules, members of the public shall be afforded time to address the board. Individual remarks shall not exceed three minutes in length, nor shall the total time provided for all remarks exceed 30 minutes. Um, and as all of you know, we've sort of struggled with this process uh, during the COVID, trying to accommodate folks that submitted uh, commentary electronically and uh, recognizing that process 
recognizing the limitations that we have in this board meeting um, and knowing exactly, knowing pretty well where the lines are drawn in order to comply with the Open Meetings Act, I am proposing the following. Um, I understand there's some 80 some folks that want to speak or, or have, have offered a statement. The statements are substantially similar, I'm told. Um, and um, what I'd like to do is, in an effort to, to give them their opportunity to speak their minds, uh, we, we will do that. Uh, we have 30 minutes dedicated to that. Um, and then at the conclusion of the 30-minute period of time, the remaining uh, remarks that have been submitted electronically will be referred to our minutes. And they will be published. The, the, the people that, that, that submitted those remarks uh, they will be published. They will have their, their opportunity to voice their view, and uh, it will comport and comply with the Open Meetings Act. The remarks that we do read uh, here for 30 minutes uh, are, will be read in the order that they were received. And uh, my understanding is Member Renningham has some all further advisory that she wanted to offer, uh, if that's uh, appropriate. Member Renningham, were you seeking recognition here? Um, actually, no, I think we're okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, so yeah, so I was uh, previously, so I do know that there's, um, okay, so we'll just get into the remarks and let's just uh, address it and let's, let's, let's proceed uh, accordingly. So Mr. State's Attorney or Mr. Clark, where are we? Who gets to be the lucky announcer? We have David Nelson. Um, we do have one person here uh, who's in person. Welcome, Mr. Nelson. Uh, that's, that's here to talk about something relating to code enforcement. So please proceed. I tried very hard to get this under three minutes, but it's a little closer to four, and I hope you give me that one minute of time. Well, um, good morning. My name is David Nelson, and I live on Home Avenue, and I'm incorporated in Warrenville. I'm a guy with a big lighted sign in my driveway. I have been unable to voice my concerns due to COVID restrictions, so I'm glad to be here today. I live in an area that's zoned R3, but if you drive down my street, you might think you're in an industrial park. This is a small sampling of my four-block neighborhood. I have a scrap metal business across the street from me. Trucks and trailers full of metal come in on a daily basis. They process refrigerators, freezers, and air conditioning units that have Freon and Mercury in them. Illinois law dictates how to recycle these, but not in my neighborhood. I'm an industrial park. They burn the garbage, process the scrap, and appliances are dropped off on a daily basis. We have well water. I have no idea where the possible PCBs, oils, and mercury I have an antique car chop shop down the street from me. Multiple cars are brought in from out of state. They're left on trailers, they're cut up, and the parts are sold on Facebook. Complaints from far back as 2018 have been issued, but they weren't by me. Don't worry, it's just an industrial park. I have a house across the street from me that's had a dumpster in the yard for nine months. No one lives there. They open burn, and the Warrenville Fire Department has had to come and put out fires there because they were bigger than the house. I have Grandview Homes buying homes in my neighborhood. They flip them. In September of 2020, they bought a house for $140,000. Four months later in December, they flipped it for $260,000, a gross profit of $120,000. But you didn't receive any permit money. There was no bonds, no fees, no inspections. I don't know who the contractors were. I sent emails and photos of the construction vehicles to Paul Haas, and he sent me an email saying he'd take care of this. Why would Paul Haas ignore a developer in our neighborhood? yet require homeowners to get permits. I have three landscaping businesses in my neighborhood, in two blocks. They have lawnmowers, tractors, trucks, trailers. One guy put a driveway into the backyard without a permit and stores bobcats back there. I have a rental property next door to me. It's been a rental for 16 years. The first 10 years, I had absolutely no problems with the lady that lived there. In 2015, a guy moves in and decides he's gonna start a car repair business. It took two years to get Paul Haas to slow the repairs. But during that time, they put up a fence and they got a permit. Then they put up a carport to hide the repairs. Still the landlord, the landlord, never got a violation for car repairs that I can find using FOIA. Now that house has built a fence down the middle of the driveway on November 21st, 2020, without a permit. It was too close to the lot line. It's anchored to the ground incorrectly. There's a screening on the bottom to stop water flowing. It was not built by the owner, but by the tenant. A firm permit was finally issued on 1-4-2021, 44 days after the fence was complete. Your ordinance states that anyone work started without a permit, the fees will be doubled, but not in my neighborhood. We're, a, we're an industrial park. They also gave him a permit to do drainage. 
for seven months, drain tile laid in the front yard. They cut the asphalt to put in the drains, but no work was done. It's been that way for seven months. Is the permit invaluable? invalid? Probably not. We're an industrial park. There is so much more, but that's for another day. I tried to get help from Deborah Olson and the building and zoning supervisor. After numerous FOIA requests, I had a number of questions concerned and asked for a meeting to make it easier to understand the permitting and inspection process. After multiple emails and leaving a voicemail from Ms. Olson, she stated that Paul Haas would be setting up a meeting. 20 days later, no phone call, no email. Sheila Rutridge, a board member I reached out to, helped me, and I would like to say thank you to her. To this day, 33 days later, I have not received a call or an email from Paul Haas for a meeting. I am not a crazy old guy screaming, get off my lawn. I'm just a new retiree that wants to live in a residential neighborhood free of businesses and garbage. I want to know if something happens to me, my wife will be safe or able to sell our home at least for market value. I'm not asking you for any new ordinances. These are things that are already covered. It's just being ignored by your code enforcement officers and permitting departments. I have no way to get rid of bad government employment. I can, however, work to elect people who hold the staff of DuPage County accountable. I still have my giant light-up sign. I don't want to roll it out and start posting photos on social media. And trust me, you don't want that either. In today's political environment, that's not good for anybody or my neighborhood. The First Amendment is clear. I have the right to free speech and redress my government. And my sign may be the only option in the future. But for today, I am asking, I am pleading, well, please, someone here, help me get resolved to these problems and help me keep my sign on the site. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nelson. <clears throat> I'm sure I think we'll be looking into this matter. Um, Mr. McCarthy, do you want to proceed with, uh, or is it Mr. Johnson? Okay, there you go. Mr. Johnson, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first online public comment submission is from Terrell Jarris of uh, Chicago and the Chicago Federation of Musicians. Uh, the subject is funding for Fine Arts Festival. Comment, I would like to express my appreciation to be asked to be an advisor to the DuPage County Ad Hoc Fine Arts Committee. I'm currently the president of the Mus Musicians Union and have been a professional performing musician for nearly 50 years. Having been a resident of DuPage County since 1984, I'm excited to work with our communities to highlight the talented artists of our county. We have so many fine cultural institutions, painters, sculptures, musicians, dancers, photographers, and cinematographers, broadcasters, poets, and writers living in our neighborhoods that we can be proud to feature. The arts are for everyone. Our lives are enriched through live artistic experiences. We're given the opportunity to experience cultural differences with enlighten our understanding of the diversity in America and to help bring our communities together. It has been proven that the arts relieve stress and have positive health benefits. Participation builds self-esteem, creates happiness, and lessens negative behavior. Children do better in school with increased concentration and creativity when they actively participate in band, orchestra, choir, ballet, art classes, and children's theater programs. The arts will also aid in the economic development of our county. People not only from DuPage County, but throughout the metro Chicago area will buy tickets to events, make purchases from local retailers, and bring vitality to our area. With this comes improvement of the community image and status. Through my experiences in the field of music, I was able to have a broader view of the world we live in. I was fortunate to live among other cultures, learn diversity, and work together to produce a creative whole. I look forward to working with the Fine Arts Committee to showcase the finest talents of our county and bring other fine artists to our county so we all can have artistic enrichment in our lives. We need to kick off a cultural renaissance in DuPage County with the Fine Arts Festival. It's imperative to bring the talents of the arts community to our residents. It is especially important now, after a devastating pandemic, that we are able to heal by gathering together and celebrating a new beginning. However, we can't do this without funding. We need to support the arts and the artists. These creatives will enhance our lives, promote diversity, understanding, and ultimately boost the economic energy of our county. We need our commitment to present the best fine arts festival we possibly can through a well-funded festival. I strongly each urge each of you to vote yes in support of funding the fine arts festival. My sincerest thanks. Thank you to each of you for recognizing our need to finance an event that will strengthen our communities. Next comment is from Barb Sapaniak of Downers Grove and the DuPage Foundation. The subject is funding for Fine Arts Festival. Comment, the Fine Arts Festival planned for this September is a wonderful opportunity to showcase the great art and music culture we have here in DuPage County. High quality arts events and programs are abundant in our community from art exhibits, theater productions, and music concerts and they're actively rebounding after the year-long hiatus most endured during the pandemic. This festival will show the community that the arts are alive once again in DuPage and will bring greater awareness of the many offerings we have right here in our own backyard. 
We all know that the arts are great for the economy, but we also know they are great for the soul. Art can improve our mood in a positive way, making us feel happier, calmer, or even inspired to do something. Right now, we can all use a bit of that. It's time to bring joy back in our lives through music and art. I urge you to support bringing this festival to fruition this fall. Barb Sapaniak, DuPage Foundation Vice President for Programs and member of the DuPage County Fine Arts Ad Hoc Committee. Next comment is from Deborah Venicia of Downers Grove and Arts DuPage slash DuPage Foundation. The subject is Fine Arts Festival. Comment, Dear Chairman Cronin and members of the DuPage County Board of Trustees, I'm writing amidst the undercurrent of excitement surrounding the Fall Fine Arts Festival as proposed by the Ad Hoc Fine Arts Committee. An event of this nature not only serves as inspiration to local artists and arts organizations devastated by the pandemic, it also sets a lively pace on the road back to normalcy. Now that more than 50% of county residents are fully vaccinated, the creative sector is ready to rebound and take its place on stage. The Fall Festival will reunite the arts and the community, a positive step that will remind audiences that the arts are alive in DuPage County. With 14 months of sheltering in place behind us, the population is ready to embrace a new freedom. The arts can lead the way by providing entertainment that instills a sense of joy, enthusiasm, and healing, while reinforcing personal values and building bridges between cultures. Because the arts are a fundamental component of a healthy community, they will provide much needed social, educational, and economic benefits that were obscured during COVID-19's reign of terror. Financially, the arts can make a big impact. Recent data from the US Bureau of Economic Analysis indicates $25.9 billion are generated by the arts sector and represent 3.3% of the total GDP in Illinois. The arts are responsible for 110,000 FTE jobs statewide and equate to $14 billion in payroll compensation every year. The arts drive tourism, retain local dollars, and serve as businesses that use goods and services. They are also part of an ecosystem that will help rebuild the local economy as we reopen. Studies have shown that art event attendees spend $31.47 per person per event beyond the cost of admission on items such as meals, parking, and babysitters. These dollars support restaurants, bars, and local merchants and stay in our neighborhood. Considering the information outlined above, I humbly ask for your support of the Fall Fine Arts Festival. With your backing, we can ensure the vitality of the arts in our, co our county and in our lives. Sincerely, Deborah Venicia, Director of Arts DuPage of the DuPage Foundation. Next comment is from Jean Coolen of Grays Lake. Uh, subject is Thursday, April 22nd, Jackal Show at Brower House, Lombard, Illinois. Comment on Thursday, April 22nd, I attended the Jackal Show at the Brower House in Lombard, Illinois. I use the word attended loosely because myself and guests of mine didn't end up staying past the fourth song. It's too bad because I've gone to the Brower House for many years and always had a good time. I never had any problems and was stunned that what, ac that what happened actually happened. I purchased a VIP front of stage table to seat six people and I was happy to do so seeing as that in this COVID era, a compromise was reached so that venues could start putting on shows. I went to the venue early since I couldn't get any real information on how this table thing was supposed to work. I've been to a few other venues that have done this and it works a little differently from venue to venue. It's always a good idea to get there early, plus I was the one organizing this for my friends and wanted to make sure we were all set up before the show. Upon getting there and doors opening, it was nice to see that the tables were all set up with our names on them. This was the first time at the Brower House for many of the people that were at my table and the first time for Jackal for some of them, some of them as well. We ordered much food and drink and sat through the two opening bands. As Jackal time started to approach, people from the back suddenly started to migrate up front and stand in front of us. The road manager for Jackal even came out and told them that these spots were for front of stage table people. It didn't matter, they wouldn't move. Jackal started and our front of stage suddenly disappeared amongst the sea of GA ticket holders from the back of the venue. Upon trying to secure our spot, security did nothing and in fact turned on us. Complaints to management fell upon deaf ears. It would seem that not enough security was hired to control the situation. I myself almost got into two altercations because of it while trying to secure what were our rightful spots at the front of the stage. I understand that times are trying for everyone, but come on, it would have taken a minimal amount of effort to control the situation. I've seen things like this before, and if you just send a couple of guys up there checking on tickets and letting people know they cannot be there, they would have moved. It was so bad that people didn't know who had a table and who didn't. People were streaming into the venue and not bothering to adhere to anything. I had purchased the same setup for Slaughter August 7th, but there's no way I'm going to that now. I demand my money back for the Jackal show, as well as the upcoming Slaughter show. I will never go there again or go to Lombard for any reason. If this had been a GA show, I would have been fine with people doing what they did and making their way to the front of the stage. It was not a GA show, not at all. I go to a lot of shows all over the country. This was unacceptable. P.S. I see they have now added a front row pit section for slaughter. This was not available upon the on sale date and has been added so that they can scam their way out of having to provide what they promised to people who bought a table. Gene Coolen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next comment is from Allison Shea of Glendale Heights. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Allison Shea and I'm a registered nurse. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for four years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Yvonne Davis of Glen Ellen, subject fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Yvonne Davis and I'm a CNA. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 17 years. Despite three years of negotiations, we remain without a fair union contract. As we enter the care center, we pass signs that say heroes work here. Heroes deserve to be treated to be fairly. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those who have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Michelin Bennett of Maywood. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Michelin Bennett and I'm a unit secretary. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for seven years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Charmaine Hearns of Bolingbrook. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Charmaine Hearns and I'm a CNA. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 20 years. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the county to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comments from Rhonda Romero of Oswego. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Rhonda Romero. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 33 years. Despite three years of negotiations, we remain without a fair union contract. As we enter the care center, we pass signs that say heroes work here. Heroes deserve to be treated, treated fairly. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Kathy Lee of Carroll Stream. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Kathy Lee and I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for seven years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Tanya Jones of Plainfield. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Tanya Jones and I'm a certified nursing and rehabilitation aide. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 18 years. Despite three years of negotiations, we remain without a fair union contract. As we enter the care center, we pass signs that say heroes work here. Heroes deserve to be treated fairly. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Lori Cooper of Roselle. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Lori Cooper and I'm a diet technician. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for six years. Despite three years of negotiations, we remain without a fair union contract. As we enter the care center, we pass signs that say heroes work here. Heroes deserve to be treated fairly. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. 
I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Nelson Garcinas of Glendale Heights. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Nelson Garcinas and I'm a certified nursing assistant. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 15 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reduction in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. The comment is from Anna Maria Arias of West Chicago. Subject is uh, fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Anna Maria Arias and I'm a housekeeper. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 22 years. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Vilma Hilado of Bloomingdale. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Vilma Hilado and I'm a registered nurse. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for four years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality health care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented pub health, public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Tay Hall Amin of Bar Barnett. Um, Subject, Fairness for Care Center Employees. Comment, my name is Tay Halamine and I am a wound care slash osotomy coordinator. I have worked at the DuPage County Care Center, ostomy coordinator, I'm sorry. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for four years. Heroes deserve to be treated fairly. I urge the county board to immediately settle our union contract. Next comment is from Carolyn Paris of Roselle. Subject, Fairness for Care Center Employees. Comment, my name is Carolyn Paris and, my li and I am a licensed practical nurse. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for two years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Javelin Craft of Bartlett. Subject, fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Javelin Craft and I'm a certified nursing assistant. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for two years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Jason Dew of Hanover Place. Subject, Fairness for Care Center Employees. Comment, my name is Jason Dew and I am a certified nursing associate. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for one year. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but will also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the county board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Christine Branch of Chicago. The subject is Fairness for Care Center Employees. Comment, my name is Christine Branch and I'm a certified nursing and rehabilitation aide. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 17 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, 
We remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Ruben Kepenpen of West Chicago. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Ruben Kepenpen and I am a certified nursing associate. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for three years. I am a hero and deserve the continuation of the 2% pandemic, pandemic wage increase. Next comment is from Saria Jacob of Carroll Stream. Subject, fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Saria Jacob and I am a certified nursing associate. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for three years. Throughout this pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Arlene Lamb of Aurora. Subject, fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Arlene Lamb and I'm a certified nursing and rehabilitation aide. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 20 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Eden Bamberger of West Chicago. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Eden Bamberger and I'm a registered nurse. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 19 years. Paying staff fairly will not only reward those that have given so much of themselves to the county, but also help us attract and retain talented and caring staff. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Judy Heiliger of Aurora. Subject, fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Judy Heiliger and I'm a certified nursing associate. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 25 years. I am a hero and deserve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase. Next comment is from Jacqueline Nato of Bartlett. Subject, fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Jacqueline Nato and I'm a registered nurse. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for almost 18 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Guillermo Cruz of West Chicago. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Guillermo Cruz and I am a certified nursing associate. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 27 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Maritas Lazardo of Bartlett. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Maritas Lazardo and I'm a registered nurse. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for almost 12 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. 
Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next comment is from Robert Jack of Bellwood. Subject is fairness for care center employees. Comment, my name is Robert Jack and I am a housekeeper. I've worked at the DuPage County Care Center for 19 years. Throughout the pandemic, my coworkers and I have worked tirelessly to provide quality care during difficult, dangerous, and uncertain times. In the face of low staffing levels, reductions in funding, and challenging conditions, we remain committed to serving our community during this unprecedented public health crisis and beyond. Despite this commitment, we have gone years without a permanent wage increase, and a recent 2% increase meant to address the hazards of working during the pandemic was stopped at the end of March without being renewed. I urge the County Board to immediately approve the continuation of the 2% pandemic wage increase and to settle our union contract. Next Mr. comment is from Mr. Davina Mr. David Mr. of Chairman. North Aurora. Excuse me, uh, Member Zay seeking yeah. recognition. Yes, thank you. We started public comment 30 minutes ago. I know that we, I think the board has gotten the message on the form letter from the employees at the, the care center. I mean, my suggestion would be that to collect a bargaining meet next week and in two weeks we get an update on what the negotiation status is. Uh, I don't think we've had one in a while. So at this point, I'd like if we could, I mean, I think, I Sounds think all reasonable. the board members have heard this loud and clear and, and we, they've got our attention and that we could uh, end public comment and then get the committee working on this and then get an update in two weeks where we stand on this issue. So, sounds very reasonable. And just uh, just so the following folks who who have submitted, they're not, their, their comment is still part of the public record. They still will have their voices heard. They will be submitted to the minutes and that complies and comports with our Open Meeting Act uh, requirements. Um, Mr. DeCiani, were you seeking recognition? Thank you, Chairman. You know, we used to meet regularly with ad hoc, and I'm a little frustrated with this situation because um, in the past probably two years we haven't met regularly. It seems like a lot of decisions are being made from the top down. And uh, so, you know, uh, nurses and CNAs, they are important. Uh, they are frontline workers. They've right. exhibited great um, heroic um, heroism in this COVID uh, relief effort. Bring this to our committee so we can get this dealt with. Let's, let's take care of our people. So. Yeah, it's always good to find out more information and know the facts and talk to Absolutely. the lawyers that are representing the county and to learn understand. about the demands that are being made and just because you demand given a your regard, Given your regard for nurses uh, during the testing, when I've asked questions and you've attacked nurses, including my family members, I don't see your high regard, regard for these health care workers currently. So my, my, we haven't met regularly, and I'm, I'm bringing that up because I've been on ad hoc labor since day one. So br bring it to us so we can address this and get okay, these people yes, what they need. You're right Thank on you. it. Thank you. Any further commentary from uh, any other members expressing concern? Um, the purpose of our process here this morning uh, was simply to give voice. We've done that. Um, and Mr. Zay has made a suggestion that we refer the remaining uh, remarks to our minutes where they will be published. And, uh, and yes, we acknowledge that the message that they are seeking to convey was conveyed loud and clear. So. Uh, with no objection, uh, we will proceed accordingly. Seeing none, hearing none. Um, that concludes our public comment. We move on to the next order of business entitled Consent. Is there a motion? So moved. And a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplain. Aye. Chavez. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. DeCiani. Aye. Eckhoff. Garcia. Hart, Krajewski, LaPlante, Ozog, Pachalski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Schwarzy, Aye. Selman, Tornatori, Aye. and Zay. Okay, uh, on to the next item of business, uh, next order of business entitled Finance, uh, member Liz Chaplin. Thank you so much, Chairman Cronin. By way of committee update, I just wanted to um, reiterate about the budget survey. We've had great um, county board member participation in the budget survey, the most this year than ever. So I, I really appreciate everybody's participation in providing questions for the survey. Um, and again, just a reminder, please get any other suggestions or questions that you have for our survey out to Joan tonight so that we can get the final uh, draft of the budget survey out to you for review and, and we can get that um, circulated. And with that, I will um, 
Move to approve placing names on payroll. It's been a motion and a second. Uh, is a, a member Garcia seeking recognition? Uh, the pay again, and here we're going back to the pay for the care center. And there, there's an eleven dollar an hour dining service worker for the care center, and we've got twelve dollar and fifty cents for just interns. I, I, this does have to be addressed sooner than later. So I just wanted to make that comment. Sure. Any other uh, discussion? There's been a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Chalski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman. Tornatori. Aye. And Zay. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, uh, Member Chaplin. Thank you so much, Chairman. Um, I'm going to move to divide the, um, oh wait, personnel. Uh, I move to approve FIR 030321 resolution revision to personnel budget. So moved, second. And a motion and a second. No fair for all. Leave. Leave. Leave is granted. Member Chaplin. Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to, um, move to motion to de uh, divide the um, budget transfer resolution um, and separate out the hundred thousand dollars for the um, fair uh, the fine arts festival would you be kind enough to repeat your motion yes i would like to um, uh, motion to divide the budget transfers to take the Fine Arts Festival $100,000 request separate. You're seeking to divide the question? Yes. Okay, so it's a parliamentary maneuver here. Uh, do you have a second? Do we have a second? Second. Who's that? Member, Member Ozog seconds the matter. Okay, is there any discussion on this? Any discussion? It's a motion to divide. Uh, so moved by Member Fair. Oh, oh yeah, there's, there's Member Desar. Thank you, Chairman. Just, um, I want to just reiterate the comments that I made at finance today to give uh, folks my reasoning for, for my vote. This agenda item shows no description, no detail, no business plan. And I support the chairwoman's um, enthusiasm. I love the idea of a fine arts festival. But as I told the chairwoman, I'm not in support of spending taxpayer money on the festival. As a member of the Ad Hoc Fine Arts Committee, <clears throat> I suggested that we find grants or corporate sponsorships or even patrons from the arts community in DuPage County. Um, DuPage County arts, museums, dance troops, theaters were devastated by the pandemic. I understand that. But we've been told that the, any proceeds from this will be going to the care center. Um, DuPage County just received $89 million in American Rescue Plan money from the National Treasury. And I love DuPage County museums, theaters, uh, musical programs, visual arts organizations. Um, and so during our discussions, when we talk about how to spend the ARPA funds, the $89 million just for this year, we'll get another $89 million next year. Um, I will be a vocal advocate to spend those millions to restore those entities. And that way, that'll help those entities now, not in three or six months after a festival, but they can get the money now to help restore them. I support the creative idea of the chairwoman. I'm 100% in favor of a fine arts festival, but as always, I'm gonna to have to vote on behalf of my constituents and I'm against using taxpayer money for this. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is on the motion to divide. There's a motion uh, <laughs> and a second on the, to divide the question. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Chaplain. Aye. Chavez. No. Covert. No. Desart. Aye. Deciani. No. Eckhoff. Aye. Garcia. Aye. Hart. No. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. No. Ozog. Aye. Pachowski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. No. Schwarzy. No. Southern Tornatori. No. And Zay. Voting to divide the question? Oh, okay. All right. What's the, what's eight to eight. Okay. All right. So I vote no. Oh. 
I'm not going to divide the question. Okay. Thank you. So we'll have to vote against all the There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I will move to um, approve the budget transfers of 6 8 2021 from various companies and accounting units. There's been a motion and a second, seconded by Member Chavez. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Oh, are we going to have discussion? Oh, sure. Member Ozon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to start my comments by uh, my reminiscence that long ago I was the president of the Coral Parents Board at Glenbird West High School, and I've always supported the arts. And I certainly support the arts, especially during this time of COVID. But uh, my objection to the allocation of $100,000 from contingency is really procedural. I really believe that this should have gone through the new committee first. Um, I understand they first met on May 11th. There could have been a special call meeting before that. And I also believe that we should have been given at least some really preliminary outline of how this money will be spent. Um, I have ran on fiscal transparency and even a, a basic uh, expenses for porta potty security, just some basic outline would have been very helpful in order to feel that I could be comfortable with this. I also want to point out that we will be left with $188,000 for the rest of the calendar year in our contingency fund, which was originally funded at about, I believe, half a million dollars or close to that. So uh, for those reasons, but especially following our own procedures that we send things through committee and that we have some outline of how things are spent, how money is being spent, um, I need to uh, vote against this today. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, member Renahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think you have you've tied our hands effectively here. Um, I'm going to have to support this because I support the rest of the budget transfers. But I will say, um, you know, good creative idea, and I think you know that's wonderful. But I think of our old colleague Tim Elliott saying, "Information is good." And here we don't even have uh, it doesn't even say arts festival in the packet itself. So disappointed that we couldn't have uh, something to go off of and I feel like I'm kind of jumping in blind here but um, I'm gonna have to support it okay further discussion mr. mr. chairman may, may I make a procedural motion yes here? please mr. Turner I, I at this point uh, mr. chairman I, I have no objection and I, I apparently voted no and I ask at this time to move to reconsider um, so that we could uh, separate this so that the people who need to be heard can be heard. So you just want to go through yes. this process? Well, so that we can again, not have to, not that we have to, not that we have to reject, not that we have to reject all of the Second. budget transfers. I think Motion it's a- Motion to reconsider the vote. I'm not going to question. Second. Thank you. Can I do that? Yes. By Robert, I'm, I'm reliably informed that uh, according to Robert's rules, a motion to reconsider is not, a, a motion to divide the question is not to be reconsidered. You can't reconsider it. And I knew that going in. Uh, and Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. State's Attorney, at this time I would move um, May I ask a question of the State's Attorney? Mr. State's Attorney, is there a way to to ultimately get this body to discuss the issue of the fine arts in some procedural manner to isolate that issue from all of the other issues within this particular piece of the agenda. I'm, I've, I've got a few books open here. Give me a moment. All right. Uh, just stand by. Just excuse me, Chairman Cronin. If I may, I, I didn't hear Member Renahan's last sentence. So, I, Member Renahan, could you just repeat what you said for that last sentence? Because I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it when you made your comments. Um. Well. I mean, basically, in short, I mean, I feel that I have to, I have to approve this because I have to approve the other budget transfers. Um, and that happens sometimes. In the it didn't even say it didn't even say arts festival 
in the budget transfer itself. There was nothing at all in the packet, and I did look for it. Um, so. Just to help clear that up for you. But there is no, there is no budget. There is no information whatsoever about what what this is approving. Absolutely nothing. So, why don't we just wait to hear from the state's attorney? I understand there's a desire on some on the part of some board members here to isolate the one issue. Uh, I, I understand where the votes line up, and I understand what the predicament is here. Um, so we're just going to have to kind of be patient for a moment here. Um, my, my expectation is, is that the funding for the arts will, will move forward, whether it's part of this larger effort or it's isolated. Um, and it's just, um, yeah. Yes, Member Ozon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like the record to show that your vote breaking the tie is uh, basically forcing me to vote against all of the budget transfers where I object procedurally to this particular budget transfer. So just wanting the record to show that I, that's going to be my vote, vote against all the budget transfers and procedurally we could have had a discussion as we did in finance and a vote and frankly the, the, the issue passed in finance. So you are limiting my ability to vote for the other Those budget Robert's transfers. Roberts rule order, they can be a pain in the neck, can't they? Thank you. I've looked at the language of Robert's rules and compared it with the language from the county board rules. And the county board rules say a, a vote may be reconsidered, whereas Robert's rules talk about a question with regards to the reconsideration of a motion to divide the question. So since your rules are more broad and take precedence over Robert's rules, your rules say a vote or question may be considered after roll call at the end of the same meeting or at the end of the first regular or adjourned meeting held thereafter, but not in a special meeting unless there is present the same number of members as was present when the original vote was taken. Um, so it, it would be after roll call at the end of the same So after roll call, you can reconsider that motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. Wait, so. Okay, so let the record reflect that the uh, the uh, state's attorney, our advisor here, has ruled that we are permitted, in spite of the first uh, sort of assertion that we were not, that our county board rules are broader and um, give us the authority to divide, to reconsider a, a motion to divide a question. Is that what you're saying, Mr. State's Attorney? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, that's fine. So we'll go back to Mr. Tornatore's motion to reconsider the, mo the, the motion and the second to divide the question. So is there a second on your motion, Mr. Tornatore? Second. Seconded by Member Chaplin to reconsider the motion and the second and the vote on the, divide, the question of dividing uh, the matter. So Mr. State, or Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. No. Chaplin. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, yes. Yes. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Rajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Wachowski Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. And Selman. Okay. 
So now we've reconsidered. We're back. Uh, are you going to renew your vote or your uh, motion to divide the question? Yes, I would like to make a motion to divide the budget transfers from 6 8 2021. To to isolate the one issue on the, the arts, funding of the yes. arts. Okay, there's Thank a motion. You. Is there a second? Member Ozog? Are you seconding this second. motion? Okay. Uh, Mr. Clark, please call the roll. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I, I didn't quite hear what um, what the motion was for. We're going back. We're, it's like a do-over. We have a motion uh, to divide the question. So moved by Member Chaplin. She's seeking to divide out and isolate the funding for the arts from the other budget transfers in this resolution. She's Her motion has been seconded by Member Ozog. So we're about ready to call the roll. Is that okay? That's that's fine. I thought I thought we did that with uh, member Tornatory, but yeah, we we just went through a little uh, reconsideration. We did a little okay. research on the rules, and we've learned something. Okay. So, okay. Thank so, you. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Ekoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Krajewski, Aye. LaPlante, Aye. Ozog, Wachowski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Aye. Schwarzy, Aye. Selman, Tornatore, and Zay. Aye. You didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, you're not allowed to vote again. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, the question is divided. So please proceed, Member Chapel. Okay. Well, all right, so the, so, um, the motion. So, so now you have two pieces in this resolution. You want to address one or the other, whichever order you um, yeah, so please proceed. I would like to make a motion to um, approve the body of the um, budget transfers. The body. Yeah, the remaining, the remaining. So everything except for yes, exactly. the arts funding. Correct. Okay, all right. Seconded. Seconded by member Garcia. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Ekoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Rajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Chalski, Renahan, Aye. Rutledge, Schwarzy, Aye. Selman, Tornatore, Aye. and Zay. Aye. Okay. Thank you. That resolution is adopted. Member Chaplin. Yes. Now I would like to make a motion to approve the $100,000 for the Fine Arts Festival. Sorry. So moved by Member Chaplin to approve funding for the Fine Arts Festival, seconded by Member Tornatore. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Oh, discussion, please. Discussion. Oh, discussion. Oh, my God. Okay. It will be. Member uh, Garcia, are you seeking recognition for purposes of discussion? Yes. Yes, okay. thank you. I just wanted to uh, very clear, uh, clearly state that I, I will be supporting this today, but um, I want to make it clear that the money that, that we are transferring is going into a fund that it can not be spent until a budget is made and um, and during our discussion during finance there will be some looking into actually instead of using this money using the ARP money so because of that reason because I also would like to have seen a, a budget but but I know there isn't one we're going to work on that today um, I will be supporting this but I want to make sure that we're not really spending anything I want to make sure that everybody is clear on that until there is a budget in place and I just want to make sure that everybody knows like an it. appropriation of course, we will Correct. have a budgeting process. Of course. Uh, any further discussion? Member Chapel. Thank, thank you so much, Chairman Cronin. So, you know, um, as the finance chair, I take my responsibility making sure our tax dollars are used for wants versus needs very seriously. You know, public safety, stormwater roads, community services, the care center, and we heard today from many of the employees there, they're all very important services that our, um, our residents rely on. And we're dealing with an opioid and mental health crisis that we've never seen before. So we're still recovering from, from the pandemic and having critical needs. We have to be mindful of how we spend our limited sales tax and property tax revenue. Just as I tell my kids, just as there's more, way, more than one way to fold a towel, there's more than one way to support the arts. 
So, and I think we should really consider all of them. So as you know, we talked about the American Rescue Plan. And I believe right now the best thing that we can do is allocate whatever this board chooses um, to the arts so that we can get immediate relief to the struggling dance and music studios and the theaters and the museums and the musicians and the artisans throughout DuPage County without using our limited sales tax and property tax dollars. I'm very supportive of Fine Arts Festival that is paid with scholarship, uh, sponsorships and grants rather than our tax, our limited sales tax and property tax. I'd also um, would really like to see this worked on in a collaborative member with the Fine Arts Committee members, the advisory members, and members <coughs> of this board. Has today no documentation or information is provided to the Finance Committee or the Fine Arts Committee other than a request for $100,000. My, all the boards that I've ever served on from the PTA, the Water Commission, and this board, and the, and the Midwest Ballet uh, Theater, you set, you set a budget before you ask for funds. The county doesn't go up. We don't balance, we don't base our budget based on our sales tax, based on our tax revenue. We base our budget, our taxes, based on the budget that we create. It seems to be a backward process. But with that said, I'm looking forward to supporting this initiative in the future as more information is provided to the board. And I understand there'll be an intergovernmental agreement coming before the board with the um, fairgrounds. So I hope at that time when that intergovernmental agreement comes through, which is actually the, um, the really bonding, the, the, um, which really is going to allow them to use that money, I look forward to supporting this at that time. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion, Member Chavez? Chairman, um, I think that we're in a time post-COVID that requires bold leadership and visionary thinking, and that's what I love about what Member LaPlante is doing, is I think she's got a committee that has a plan. I have full faith in this committee that they are going to spend these funds responsibly. We're going to have oversight over all of these funds, but I really think that I'm behind this 110%. I think it needs to happen now. I don't think there should be any delay, and I'm just excited to get behind it. Very good. Thank you, Member Chavez. For the discussion, Member Covert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to thank uh, Member LaPlante again for her hard work and effort and dedication to this. Um, you know, we've all always supported the arts uh, in DuPage County, and uh, I'm excited to support it uh, again. Um, this this Fine Arts uh, Festival, you know, it has a great potential for generating uh, revenue for our county because there will be ticket prices and you know, and, and we could get reimbursements um, to our general fund um, through, through those revenues. Um, it also stimulates our county's economy and it rejuvenates, you know, the, the constituents and the public. And it is a small amount of money. It's $100,000 with the potential of bringing in even more um, back to the county. Um, corporate sponsorships and grants are definitely not off the table. Um, I'm sure that uh, Member LaPlante will look into these options as well. And we have many arts organizations that are supporting this uh, uh, arts festival and are partnering uh, up with us um, uh, for this great initiative. So I am fully confident that Member LaPlante will make this work. And, um, you know, she is the only, I call her the expert in the arts because we only have one uh, musician, you know, on the county board, and she she brings a lot to the table, and I'm really excited about this. So, uh, I wholeheartedly support it. Thank you for doing this. For the discussion, Member Zay, followed by Member Isiani, followed by Member Rutledge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> As it's been stated, nothing's being spent right now. This money's money's just being appropriated. Right. You know, and DuPage County has always been a forward-looking county. And for us, for Member LaPlante, and applaud her with her passion for this, to come up with this, because honestly, six months ago, nobody would even have thought of this. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We didn't know what was going to happen. And now as we're coming out of it, what a better way for our community to come together in a fine arts festival. And again, like I said, fine arts and gyms, they usually don't go in the same sentence. But uh, for somebody who's got this passion, and there is oversight here, the committee's going to work on this. We've got members from each district on there. Uh, and I think this is gonna, money that's going to be well spent. It's thinking outside of the box, doing something that maybe other counties are not doing and possibly should be doing in the future. Maybe we're going to be the leader and other counties are going to look at the fine arts more as we are. So I support this today, Member LaPlante's passion, and uh, 
I'm sure she's going to do a great job on this and no money is going to be misappropriated. It's all going to be spent right and all those uh, appropriations will come before this board for approval. Member DCN. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, this industry has taken a, a beating. I mean, our restaurants, we, we know that they've taken a beating, but they've at least had, been open for carry out to limited business. Um, the fine arts and performing arts have really been out of business, uh, no help. And, uh, you know, this, this really, I think, is important. Uh, I, I applaud member of the plant's leadership. Uh, on a side note, I got to see her perform at 3.02 on Saturday night with uh, some of our judiciary members. And I hope you perform uh, for us because you are one talented lady. Uh, she's, she's quite a musician. So, uh, uh, and on a political level, you know, um, you know, I know we've got watchdogs on this group that claim uh, they were on the Water Commission and whatnot. And you know, I want to remind you, uh, Ms. Chaplin, you were the treasurer of the Water Commission uh, when, when these challenges happened, the treasurer of the Water Commission. So keep that in mind when you're voting for this. Uh, you know, if there's no boogeyman here, this is likely going to be ARP reimbursable with federal funds. Uh, we're going to watch the process go through committee, and, uh, and we're going to celebrate uh, the arts in the page yes. I'll, I'll be supporting it. There's no point of privilege. Yes, so thank you. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Yes, I was uh, the treasurer on the Water Commission for six months, short time, till they found it, another treasurer. And I do want to talk about that a little bit. Um, when I was on the Water Commission, the Water Commission started using money from reserves and um, they started using the money to reduce the water rate to the municipalities rather than for their operations. Um, they, I continually voted against the water rate reductions and um, I spoke out against them looking at uh, the documentation that was provided in the audits, you could see that selling water for less than you buy it for was not sustainable. But I would like to point out that when, you know, the reporters reported that member Chaplin grew more concerned, kept sending more emails, a forensic audit was done. Now, member, other members of this committee were on that water commission with me, but the water commission, the forensic audit pointed out, mentioned two commissioners on that board that did their job. It was Commissioner Chaplin and it was Commissioner Alan Poole from Naperville said Commissioner Chaplin continually warned them of the inappropriate or the wrong uh, budget practices that they were doing and member Poole found a 15 million dollar accounting error. So I am very confident um, and I'm very proud of my service on the Water Commission and I just want to reiterate again I was one of two commissioners singled out in the forensic audit for doing my job and as I say I take my responsibility to the taxpayers very very seriously and you know um, I'm hearing that we're going to be raising money for this and that's great and when I see money being raised for this I'll support it and I you know I'm just right now not at a, a point where I want to gamble with the taxpayer money so thank you uh, member Rutledge. thank you uh, chairman um, I we heard a presentation this morning about the ARPA money that's coming in uh, we also heard a presentation about the status of our, our reserves. Uh, so this small amount of money to, to allow this committee to move forward, to develop that budget that will still need approval by this body, I, I think uh, this is kind of a no-brainer. I will also add that um, I am the vice chair of the Fine Art Committee. I also uh, make my living as an artist, and I was devastated uh, over the term of COVID. So, um, speaking of, I'm not a musician, but I am a talented artist, and I would speak on behalf of everybody on this committee to say that this is just a no-brainer. And I, I wonder about some of the um, direction on this book. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Uh, Member Oza. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I am now in my 11th year on boards that, that spend taxpayer money, and I have never seen a proposal with absolutely no documentation, and that's what I particularly object to here. And I believe we're setting a precedent, and everybody is going to vote the, the, the way they want. This is not about supporting the arts. To me, it's about supporting how we conduct our business, and to me, that's through a committee. The committee approves it. We have some idea of where the money is going to be spent, even if it's the most rudimentary 
uh, outline of basic expenses, and then we proceed from there. And in terms of it being a small amount, as far as I'm concerned, and again, this is my 11th year of public board service, no taxpayer money is a small amount. Thank you. Hey, uh, Member Hart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know we've spoken about this issue uh, in both finance and county board. I do want to just lend my voice in support of this fine arts festival and uh, commend Member LaPlante for her leadership on this, as other members have. Uh, I mentioned this in, in finance as well, but uh, Frida Kahlo's exhibit at this uh, College of DuPage is just one of many prime examples that we have now of arts ability to build community as well as uh, build economic development. I see this fine arts festival as an opportunity for us to look towards economic development and community. And as others have said, uh, this is the time to do it, especially as we're coming out of COVID. So I support the innovative idea, and I look forward to voting on it now. Thank you. Okay. Um, further discussion? Seeing none? Uh, hearing none? Uh, I, I feel compelled, however, before we go uh, to just... Chairman. Oh, Pardon me? Sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Member Desart. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. I just had an, uh, another comment. Uh, as a member of the Maple Pride Board of Directors, I've been an integral part of helping them to plan their two-day Maple Pride Fest at Naper Settlement. It's coming up September 11th and 12th. And I can tell, I can tell you that um, without a business plan, without a budget, um, nobody would have given us money. I was successful in writing an $85,000 grant for Naple Pride Fest for 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen, so we didn't receive the grant money. Here for 2021, I was successful in writing a grant for Naple Pride Fest, and we won $115,000. That's where we got our seed money. But in order to submit that grant and ask for money, um, we had to have the budget. We had to have a line item. How much are we paying talent? What are porta potties? How much is security? Um, we're having a, a circus theme, so circus, circus performers talent fees. We had to have that budget pretty solid when we went and asked for money. And again, I support the arts. My problem with this request is that there is there, we are being asked for money without any budget consideration, without any line items. How much are you spending for talent? How much is the fairgrounds costing? We had to have these detailed um, line items to present to the people we're, we're, we're writing grants to. And there is no information in this packet to say how the money might be spent or what the budget of this fest would be. So and all of us, I think, are, are in favor of the arts. I'm not in favor of using grant money, and I'm not in favor of not having any business plan before coming to us to ask for money. Thank you. For the discussion, Mr. Krajewski, I saw him seeking. Oh, I was just remembering to start with waiting. Oh, okay. I can see her up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. You don't have the luxury of seeing behind you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I won't repeat what I said in finance, but I do fully support this. Uh, so to Member Desart's um, comment about, about the grant and having to, to cross the T's and dot the I's before she got the money, couldn't agree more. But the reason that this is different is that we're not giving any money yet to the Fine Arts Committee, right? So if we were writing a check, then the business plan would be far more relevant and necessary than it is right now, which is just taking this money and setting it aside. And then when a business plan and the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, that's when the check will be written. So that's the difference between the two, in my mind. Thank you. Yeah, really quick, please, really quick. please. Thank you. Oh. oh my God. Just yes. really quick. And at that time, I will proudly support this event. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Member LaPlante, would you like to offer some remarks? Um, you know, I would just like to say thank you so much to everyone who is supporting this initiative. Thank you um, to the chairman who was so receptive to my idea of forming an ad hoc fine arts committee. I also am thrilled that this is garnering this much attention, because I'm going to take a stab in the dark, and I'm going to guess this is the most that the fine arts have ever been discussed on the board floor. Would you agree? I would agree. Without a doubt. Right? And probably without the only doubt. time. So, I'm sure the motive's behind it. But right? So, so how fantastic is this? We have brought the topic of the fine arts to the forefront of discussion in DuPage County. And this is my goal, people. So you know what? We're already making headway. We're making sure 
that the fine arts are part of an integral discussion when we discuss budgeting and when we discuss DuPage County initiatives, when we discuss what is best for the community. So I could not be more thrilled. The other thing that I would like to say is, let's all think about what got us through the pandemic. Yes, science, number one, right? You know what else helped us cope? The arts. We all sat there and said, what are you watching? Give me something to read. What music are you listening to? Have you taken up knitting? Oh, you're painting. What, are you, what new instrument are you learning? That's what the arts does. It comforts us during a hard time like a pandemic. Then, when we're ready to celebrate, let's think of um, our last great national celebration was the inauguration on January 20th. Do you remember what everyone talked about after that inauguration? They talked about the performers, about the artists. Amanda Gorman lifted up the whole nation on her tiny shoulders with her remarkable poetry. Lady Gaga sang the national anthem. That even surprised me. And I was blown away when she came out and sang. The president's own marching band in the background. That's what united us that day. That's what got us through, gave us hope, united a very divided country. We all came together so we could discuss Garth Brooks' rendition of, rendition of Amazing Grace, did we not? Um, the Irish violinist Patricia Tracy performed during a private mass. That was the only thing I was jealous about. Um, you know, my point is, the arts are there for us during times of hardship, when we celebrate, and it's time to support them by putting our money where our mouth is. The only way you support the arts is by funding the arts. Thank you very much for this chance to speak. Again, thank you all for your support. I'm glad that this is being discussed. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for those remarks and that perspective. I really appreciate it. Uh, as the presiding officer here, I feel compelled to address some of the objections that people have raised regarding procedure, procedural objections, um, regarding process and how we approve matters. Uh, I can say without hesitation, those objections are unfounded and misinformed. Uh, in any governmental body, whether it's the United States Congress, the legislature, or local government, the first step that, you, that, you, that when you're dealing with a bold new program, an initiative, is you appropriate money. You appropriate money. You set the money aside. And then the hard part of scrutinizing that money and what it's going to be spent for is all before this body. That will be part of the process. And not one dime of the taxpayer's dollars will be approved and finalized and delivered until we go through that process. That's our duty and our obligation to the, the taxpayers. And that's what we do here in county government. So to, to suggest anything other than that is, is, is unfounded, is misleading, it's misinformed, and it's disappointing. So with that, uh, we will take, uh, there's a motion, and oh my goodness. Yeah. <clears throat> we have to recommend, member Olson. Mr. Chairman, with all due respect, this money, this is not how we have done things, at least in the two and a half years I've been on this board. And usually there is a budget for a committee, which does not exist for this, this committee. This is a new program. It's an initiative. Okay, we're that's all fine. Aside. We're going to get to the scrutiny. We're, we're embracing some leadership here. We're looking at something that's positive but for the community. If you want to stand in the way, that's your prerogative. I'm not standing in the way. I'm using my own personal experience in how things should be done properly, Good. in my opinion. But that does not mean my opinion is not valid, Mr. Chairman. I didn't say it was. Yeah, I just, just did. I just took okay. a chance to... And I need to point out, there are other considerations here, and we are not going to take those into consideration. Glenda, or, uh, Bloomingdale has just announced that they're going to bring back their fest in September. There are other festivals going on. Okay. There's other considerations. But my major consideration was to not know where this appropriation or how it was going to be spent. And that is a legitimate concern, which I am totally within my rights to express. Of course you are. Thank you. Of course you, you are. Of course you are. All right, with that, uh, we have a motion and a second uh, on this matter to fund the fine arts uh, in an appropriation to set aside money as we more fully and comprehensively develop what that uh, festival will look like and what the taxpayers' dollars will be going to fund and what part it, co it constitutes with respect to um, uh, private donations and other support. So with that, uh, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. 
Chaplin. No. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Nay. Deciani. Aye. Ekoff. Aye. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Rajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. No. Chalski. Renahan. No. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman. Tornatori. Aye. And Zay. Twelve voting aye, four voting Twelve voting aye, and um, six voting nay, four. Twelve and six is sixteen. Two people are not voting here. So the resolution is adopted. Thank you, Member Chaplain. A, a fine report. <laughs> Smooth as silk. <laughs> um, we move on to the next order of business uh, entitled Development. Member Sam Tornatore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DCO. 04021 ordinance C2115. This is a zoning hearing officer's recommendation to approve a conditional use to increase the total square foot for a detached accessory building from 1,224 square feet to approximately 2,570 square feet. And a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Peckoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Rajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Chalski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. And Selman. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Mr. Torn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of DCO 41 21, Northern C2125. Frankie, this is a zoning hearing officer's recommendation <coughs> to approve a conditional use to allow an existing shed to remain on the property where it has existed for at least five years. Leave is granted. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move approval of DCO 43-21, Ordinance C-2127. This is a zoning hearing officer's recommendation to approve a conditional use to allow two existing sheds to remain less than three feet from the interior site property line. Leave is granted, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Finally, I move approval of DCO 44-21, Ordinance C-2129. The zoning hearing officer's recommendation to approve a conditional use to allow an existing shed to remain less than three feet from the rear property line. Second most favorable rule. Leave. Leave is granted. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tornatore. Fine report. On to the order of economic development. Member, member Amy Chavez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, given the information that we received today's finance, I would like to um, ask that we remove this from today's agenda. And uh, we have a regroup on this rental agreement. And uh, we come back and so, so without uh, seeing no objection, a member Chavez seeks to uh, uh, take this matter out of the record. Hearing none, seeing none, thank you very much. We move on to the next order of business entitled Health and Human Services. Member Renahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to start by saying thanks to all who submitted public comment on the Care Center and ongoing contact uh, negotiations. Thank you all for your tireless service, your commitment to the county. I think we would all agree that you are heroes. Um, I appreciate your input, and like all of you, the center does look forward to a mutual agree agreeable contract. And to that end, I'd like to read a statement that I received this morning from David Miller, the attorney for the Care Center. So to quoting him, the county has paid hazard pay from the pandemic's beginning. One element of the hazard pay was a 2% temporary pay increase. That increase expired pursuant to top board resolution on March 31st, 2021. Before that expiration, the center offered to negotiate with the union to extend the stipend. The center has made proposals to the union to which it has not responded. The parties continue to negotiate. The center and the union are currently neg negotiating many issues. The center remains ready, willing, and able to make negotiation of the 2% wage stipend a priority if the union wishes. I would just add to that, um, as, the, as the parties continue to negotiate, you know, the union really is your ad advocate, and I would suggest you may want to address the concerns there as well as to this board. Um, and then just as a final note, um, as an FYI, the hard work of all the professionals at the care center, I'm proud to report the last staff or resident that tested positive was the end of April. So great work over there and congratulations. With that, I will move approval of change order HHSP 4-21 amendment to resolution with Catholic uh, Charities at CSBG free housing assistance with the COVID-19 pandemic, January 1st, 2021. Through December 31st, 2021, increasing the contract by 65000 Been a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. 
Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Salmon Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Ekoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Kajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. And Pachowski. Thank you, Member Renahan. I move uh, approval of authorization for overnight travel for the Director of Community Services to the NACO Conference, July 8th, 2021, through the July 13th, 2021, $2,655. Second most favorable. Okay. Leave is granted. Thank you, Member Renahan. On to Judicial Public Safety, Member Renahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of JPSP 28-21, a contract purchase, purchase order to Life Technologies Corporation for a rapid HIT ID system, laptop and two-year extended contract for the Crime Lab for the Sheriff's Office, $152,986.95. Second. And a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman. Tornatore. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Ekoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Rajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. And Pachowski. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, on to the order of public transit, Member Ozog. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of PTR 029421. A uh, resolution, intergovernmental agreement between the Regional Transportation Authority and the County of DuPage for the DuPage County Multimodal Mobili Mobility Plan. Uh, county cost is $18,975. And a motion and second. a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Ozog. Yes. Chalski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Salmon. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Backoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Krajewski. Aye. And LaPlante. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Member Ozog. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Public Works. I move for approval of PWR 029521, a resolution declaration of the Steeple Run Well House Number 2 property as surplus real estate. Second. And a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Ozog. Yes. Wachowski, Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Salmon, Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Tiziani. Aye. Ekoff. Aye. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Rajewski. Aye. And LaPlante. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, Member Ozog. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of PWR 0296 21. Declaration of the Highland Hills Sanitary District property as surplus real estate. And a motion and a second. The request for leave is granted. Member Ozog. Thank you. I move for approval of PWR 0321, a land sale contract, $430,000, 454 Frontage Road, Clarendon Hills. Leave. Leave is granted. Thank Number you. I move for approval of PWP 028221. Recommendation for the approval of a contract to ComEd to provide electric delivery services for the operation of all public works facilities for the period June 8, 2021 through June 7, 2024 for a total contract amount not to exceed $1,168,000 per 55 ILCS competitive bids not suitable for competitive bids, public utility. Question from Member Rutledge. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Not really a question, just a comment as the chairperson of, or the chairwoman of Environmental Committee. Um, as a residential purchaser of my electricity through ComEd, I am actually able to designate that I want my electricity to be sourced from renewable sources. So I think that when the time is right to uh, uh, ask comment. I talked to Nick this morning. He said it would be about eight months before we get to that part of the discussion, but I very much would like to see us request that any of the electricity that we purchase as a county come from renewable sources. Thank you. Fabulous. Further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, there's been a motion and a second. A request for leave. Leave is granted. Thank you, Member Ozog. Under Thank the you, order of redistricting, redistricting, is that correct? Member Jim Zay. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on RDCP 291-21, a contract issued to Grapple LLC uh, for one-time fee of $30,000 to provide general consulting services uh, concerning the 2021 redistricting process. Second, Chaplain. I've got a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplain. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Giciani. Aye. Peckoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Radjewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Kachowski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman and Tornatori. Aye. Okay, thank you. Resolution is adopted. Mr. Zay on stormwater. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on SMP 288-21, agreement between DuPage County and Engineering Resource Associates, Professional Engineering Services for St. Joseph's Creek. The amount of hundred nineteen thousand four hundred eighty dollars. Second. Right. A motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Zay. Aye. Chaplain. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Peckoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Chowski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman and Tornatore. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on SMP 289-21, approval of contract issued to V3 companies, Brown Call Professional Engineering Services, the amount not to exceed $95,000. Leave. Leave is granted. Mr. Zay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move on SMP 290-21, approval of contract issued between DuPage County and Scarce for youth-based water quality education, the amount not to exceed $77,000. Second most favorable rule. Leave. Leave is granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Zay. On to the order of technology in uh, Member Selman's absence, uh, Greg Hart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one item today. Uh, I move on to EP 292-21, recommendation for the approval of a contract to AT&T Mobility for the annual licensing and maintenance of the AirWatch mobile device management for IT. And a motion. Second. And a second. By Member Schwarzy. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Hart. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. LaPlante. Aye. Ozog. Aye. Chowski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman. Tornatore. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Giciani. Eckhoff. Aye. And Garcia. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, uh, Member Hart. On to the order of transportation in Member Don Pachowski's absence. We have Vice Chair uh, Ozor. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of DTR 029721, a resolution intergovernmental agreement between the County of DuPage and the Village of Bartlett uh, for snow removal assistance, no county cost. Second. second. And a motion and a second. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Ozog. Aye. Chowski. Renahan. Aye. Rutledge. Aye. Schwarzy. Aye. Selman. Tornatori. Aye. Zay. Aye. Chaplin. Aye. Chavez. Aye. Covert. Aye. Desart. Aye. Deciani. Aye. Eckhoff. Garcia. Aye. Hart. Aye. Krajewski. Aye. And LaPlante. Aye. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Member Ozog. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval of DTR 029821. Agreement between the County of DuPage, State of Illinois Department of Transportation, and Progressive Rail Incorporated for uh, York Road between Seaver Court and Foster Avenue Railroad Crossing Improvements, Section 200171, no county cost. Second. Leave. Leave is granted, Member Ozark. Okay, I move for an amendment, DTR01, I move for approval of an amendment, DT. R0150B21, Amendment to Resolution DTR0150A21, Local Public Agency Agreement for Federal Participation between the County of DuPage and the Illinois Department of Transportation for improvements along Grand Avenue from Lake Street to County Line Road, uh, a correction of a Scrivener's error. Leave. Leave is granted. Okay, I move for approval of DTP 028321, recommendation for the approval of a contract to AT&T Corporation to provide telecommunication services as needed for the Division of Transportation owned traffic signals for the period August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022 for a contract total not to exceed $45,000 per renewal option under RFP 17002LG, third and final option to renew. 
Leave. Leave is granted. I move for approval of DTP 028421, recommendation for the approval of a contract to 3M Company to furnish and deliver signed material rolled goods for the Division of Transportation for the period June 24, 2021 through June 23, 2022 for a total contract amount not to exceed $50,000 per low bid, first of three options to renew. Leave. Leave is granted. Member Rose. Thank you. I move for approval of DTP 028521, agreement between the County of DuPage and A. Epstein and Sons International, Incorporated, for professional engineering services to establish a DuPage County Trails Plan for Division of Transportation for a total contract amount not to exceed $299,646.34. County to be reimbursed 80% or $239,717 and seven cents professional services vetted through a qualification based selection process and compliance with Illinois local government professional services selection act. Second. Leave. A motion and a second request for leave. Leave is granted. Member Rosa. Thank you. I move for approval of DTP 028621, an agreement between the County of DuPage, Illinois and FGM Architects for professional architectural and engineering services for division of transportation facilities at 140 North County Farm Road. 140 building and 1900 West Arthur Drive, West Chicago, Yellow Freight Building, uh, for a contract total amount not to exceed $1,156,637, professional services, architects, engineers, and land surveyors, vetted through a qualification-based selection process in compliance with Illinois Local Government Professional Services Selection Act. Leave. Thank you. I move for approval of DTP 028721, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Vulcan Incorporated, doing business as Vulcan, Vulcan Aluminum, etc., uh, to furnish and deliver signed material, sign faces as needed for the Division of Transportation for the period June 24, 2021 through June 23, 2022, for a total contract amount not to exceed $65,000 per lowest responsible bid. First of three options to renew. Second most favorable rule. Leave is granted. Member Ozark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And finally, I move for approval of DTO 004521, an ordinance authorizing the transfer of a storm sewer system for the purpose of stormwater management and flood control from the County of DuPage Division of Transportation to the Stormwater Management Department. Second most favorable rule. Uh, Thank leave, you. That concludes. Leave is granted. Thank you very much, uh, Member Ozog. Um, that concludes our committee reports. We move on to the next order of business entitled Old Business. Old Business. Anyone seeking recognition? Member Chaplain. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Mike Crow. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks so much, Chairman Crow. So I enjoyed Mr. Davis's um, presentation today about the Tuskegee um, and what they're doing over at the airport. Um, but I noticed something that he said that I thought was really interesting. So Mr. Davis mentioned that he had not learned about Juneteenth until he was an adult, right? So he's not learning, you know, kids aren't learning this in school. But, you know, the month of June, um, a lot of people are celebrating Juneteenth. So the significance of that day is that it marks the day that the federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas in um, 1865 to take, take control of the state to ensure that all enslaved people were free. And that was two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. So, I mean, it's really a significant date, and I'm looking forward to the um, presentation that's going to be held on Juneteenth with COD, so I think that's a, a really nice thing. But I just encourage people to learn a little bit about Juneteenth and the significance, because understanding our history is very important. And then just something that I just learned, um, that June is National Post-Traumatic Stress um, Syndrome Day. So um, it's intended to raise awareness about people that have suffered uh, post traumatic stress, and it really um, helps to support the invisible wounds of war, um, sexual assault, or any other kind of trauma that um, you know people have, and that you know that they seek the proper treatment. So I just thought that was kind of I didn't know about that, and I thought maybe next year we can do a proclamation. For PS for sure. um, post traumatic stress. So that that concludes my comments. Thank Very you. Very good. Anyone else seeking recognition on the order of old business? Old business. Seeing none. Hearing none. Uh, we move on to the next order of business entitled new business. Member Rutledge is seeking recognition. Thank you, Chairman. Um, again, as my chairmanship of the environmental committee, 
Uh, Dana from our county board office mentioned to me the other day, she's like, boy, we sure print a lot of agendas. So uh, the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. The first one is reduce. So that is my charge today. On Thursdays, we get a packet that's emailed to us. Uh, when we come in for the county board, there is a full packet of whatever is happening that day at uh, Teresa's desk in the county board office. And then we come in and we also have individual agendas printed at each one of our places. So my suggestion is that we stop doing this. If you need a printed copy, pick it up from Teresa. Uh, if anybody has an issue with this, please let Dana know that. And, and when you come to the county board office, just say, hey, Dana, could you print me a, a, an agenda for economic development or whatever, but, but let's try to live by the three R's uh, and reduce, uh, reuse, which, you know, we've got that already happening, and recycle. So thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you, Member Rutledge. Anyone else seeking recognition uh, on the order of new business? New business. Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, I am reliably informed that we do not have any matter to come before us on executive session, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting to Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021 at 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Meeting adjourned. Okie dokie.